So we talked last week about Red Lobster and um, them probably going to file for bankruptcy. Yeah, they did that today. All right. They filed for Chapter 11. Eli, do you know the difference between a Chapter 11 and a Chapter 7? I used to, but I don't remember. Okay. 11 is a restructure. 7 is a liquidation. Okay. More often than not, it seems, uh, 11s end up turning into a 7. Okay. By the time it's all said and done. So we'll see. But more often than not, that feels like what happens. Um, so time will tell. Anyways, let's see what's going on. Uh, this is from NPR. Uh, Red Lobster files for bankruptcy after missteps, including all-you-can-eat shrimp. Uh, Red Lobster, America's largest seafood chain known for its shrimp and cheddar bay biscuits or cheddar bay twists, like we just talked about trying to figure out. Uh, it's filed for bankruptcy. Its seafood restaurants are in hot water for a series of bad choices by a parade of executives, including an ill-fated promotion for all-you-can-eat shrimp. Almost 580 locations in the U.S. and Canada are expected to stay open through the process. Good luck with that. Right. Employing about 36,000 workers. Last week, dozens of other Red Lobster locations closed. Their entire contents have already been auctioned off. The fire sale was a precursor to a long-expected bankruptcy filing in which Red Lobster plans to sell substantially all of its assets. Since March, the chain has been run by Jonathan Tybus, known as a corporate restructuring expert. Red Lobster... Red Lobster's troubles include a difficult macroeconomic environment, a bloated and underperforming restaurant footprint, failed or ill-advised strategic initiatives, and increased competition within the restaurant industry. I want to stop for just a second before we go back to the details, and I want to complain about NPR. Okay. Okay. Because there's news reporting, and then there's being cute about it, and they're trying to be cute about it. Remember, this is a seafood restaurant. Earlier up, they were saying how the restaurants are in a are in hot water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the next statement they make is Red Lobster, now the largest seafood chain, did not get cooked just recently. <laughs> and then after that, and during this cultural shift, Red Lobster's finances have floundered. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, so who wrote then. this? Alina Seleuk. Seleuk. Alina, my apologies. I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but please stop being cute with your writing. Just write. Doesn't anybody just report anymore? Just, just do your job. Fair Anyways. enough. Rant over. Back to the story. A private equity firm bought the chain 10 years ago from Darden, which owns rivals Olive Garden and Longhorn Steakhouse. The firm Golden Gate Capital funded the deal partly by selling Red Lobster's real estate. That meant the chain had to start paying rent. That's now a major financial factor in the bankruptcy, which asked the court to reject 108 leases, letting the company abandon those locations. Since 2020, it's been run by its largest shareholder, Thai Union Group, a seafood supplier behind the Chicken of the Sea brand. And the bankruptcy filing lays much of the blame on Thai Union and ex-CEO Paul Kenny. So you remember at the beginning of this, I said that there's a little something else going on here with Red Lobster, in my opinion. So let's go to this other article that I found from Reuters. Red Lobster probes endless shrimp losses after bankruptcy filing. This is very interesting. Red Lobster, which filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in Florida on Sunday night, is investigating the role its majority owner, Thai Union, played in the restaurant's chain's endless shrimp promotion that caused $11 million in losses. Red Lobster said the debacle was part of a pattern of mismanagement by the global seafood company that owns most of its equity and supplies shrimp to its restaurants. Red Lobster, with about 550 locations, had offered $20 endless shrimp as a limited tie promotion. Then former CEO Paul Kenny, again the Thai Union guy, made it permanent a year-round option in May 2023 despite significant pushback from other management team members. Some Red Lobster restaurants started facing shrimp shortages. At the same time, it eliminated two breaded shrimp suppliers, leaving Thai Union with an exclusive deal that led to higher costs, current CEO Jonathan Tybus wrote in the filing. Thai Union exercised an outside influence on the company's shrimp purchasing. 
The debtors are currently investigating the circumstances around these decisions. Hmm. So, Eli, do you get what's going on there? Kind of got backed into a corner there uh, from the CEO making like, hey, we're going to have this and all you can eat shrimp permanent year round option. And then like the rest of the suppliers just kind of. No, I don't. Wait on. Did Red Lobster get rid of those other suppliers or did those other suppliers back out? That was a little bit unclear. My impression was Red Lobster cut them. Okay. So that I feel like there was some under the table deals going on there somewhere. Yeah, Buffy. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think what happened here was Thai Union, who had said previously, I read this someplace else that that they didn't really enjoy being in the restaurant business uh, and were looking to offload, and they they have, I believe, now got rid of their equity in it, but. I, I think they were in a business they didn't want to be in and they decided to bleed it dry. So if they set themselves up as the only shrimp supplier to this major restaurant chain in their portfolio and then the CEO of the company who is a Thai union guy mandates this $20 endless shrimp, well, Thai union's going to start making out like a bandit with their shrimp sales Mm -hmm. while they're bleeding dry this company that they don't want to have anyways. Yep. Yeah. That allegedly, calm down, allegedly is some shady stuff. Uh, Now, none of that surprises me because, you know, the older I get, I'm a capitalist, don't get me wrong, but uh, I'm not in favor of capitalism the way it is currently practiced. And it's practiced by a whole lot of shady companies doing a whole lot of shady things. And, you know, we'll see kind of what comes out as this chapter 11, which will probably become a seven, um, plays out because more and more will come to light. But I'm definitely of the opinion uh, that it is entirely possible that uh, Thai Union just purposefully tanked that company to boost their own profits which makes all the sense in the world i suppose it's not overly ethical which could have other legal ramifications i would assume potentially i imagine that uh that there's going to be some government types that are going to look into this for sure yeah um and definitely some um some creditors if they're if they're found to have done something wrong here if again I could definitely see some creditors who don't get what they need to get out of the Red Lobster bankruptcy going directly after Thai Union. Or if there were um, stock sales that happened. Well, Thai Union, I believe, is privately held. Oh, is it? And Red Lobster was held within them. I could be wrong on the Thai Union part, but Red Lobster itself was was held in part by Thai Union and a few other investors. Mm. They're not publicly traded. Gotcha. So so we'll see. It's messy. Um, this is another one we'll keep our eye on because, I, again, I don't think that the restaurant industry is done bleeding yet either, especially yeah. if there's stuff like this going on. Again, um, you know, we only know what's been filed and alleged so far, but if, if true and their supplier just... Uh, destroyed one of uh, America's longest standing and best known restaurants yeah maybe we don't buy chicken of the sea anymore for kitty over there (laughs) I think we need to go to a different brand perhaps hey thanks for watching be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and join us every Monday and Wednesday at 10 o'clock Eastern 7 Pacific for our live show